Magnuson's a businessman. There's something very proper about what he does. He, he goes through a world that respects and honors and accommodates him. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and his last vow just aired and left us with so many questions, so it's time to do another Q&A. The good news is, is that they've already plotted out Series 4, they've started working on it, and they kind of know where Series 5 is headed, so there's going to be plenty more Sherlock. Just to fill the Sherlock-shaped hole that's in all of our chests right now while we wait for Series 4 to get here, I'm going to be doing Musketeers videos starting on Sunday. That's going to be a Sunday show just like Sherlock was. Like last time, I just picked 20 of your questions. I condensed some of the answers because a lot of the questions were the same. I'm also holding a lot of the Series 4-based questions for my Series 4 q and I'll be doing a predictions video later this week, and then after that I'll do another Q&A. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. Careful for spoilers in this video though, because we will be talking about specific plot points, so if you haven't seen His Last Vow yet, just wait to watch this. Cue the Mind Palace, so let's get started. Question number one, Chaos Thou asks, Were Janine and Sherlock just using each other, or did she believe Sherlock's lies? She sold their story to the tabloids and made a bunch of money, so I think she didn't know Sherlock was lying to her, I think she was surprised. She also disabled his morphine out of spite, so she was really pissed at him, so no, I don't think she knew. Question number two, Stephanie Vicente asks, did Sherlock know that Magnuson was Cam from the Wedding Telegraph before he learned Mary's secret? No, he probably didn't realize the connection between Mary and Magnuson until he was in the hospital. Question number three, Fangirl1502 asks, What is up with everyone talking about the third Holmes brother? So Mycroft has this scene where he talks about the other one, and a lot of people are either theorizing that it's either Redbeard, the dog, or he's talking about another Holmes brother that, you know, died at some point in the past. Based on what we know now, I think he's just talking about Redbeard, the dog, but if there is another Holmes brother, I'm hoping that it has something to do with the series 4 plot. Question number 4, Ivy Hay asks, could you rank all of your favorite Sherlock episodes? So right now, I'd say in order of, you know, most favorite to least favorite, it's Scandal, Sign of Three, Reichenbach, Great Game, Last Vow, Empty Hearse, Study in Pink, Baskerville, and Blind Banker. Question number 5, Vansa Basilia asks, do you think that Moriarty is still alive? Good question, yes and no. I'll say that the person you saw shoot himself on the rooftop during Reichenbach is definitely dead, but I'm saving a lot of the Moriarty talk for my Series 4 videos. Question number 6, Philip Rokovic asks, What was your funniest moment? I would have to say Sherlock and Mycroft getting caught smoking during Christmas by their mother. That was really funny. Question number 7, Brooke Hester asks, Did you think that the goodbye scene was too cold? Honestly, I think that Watson is just, you know, getting on with his life. He's kind of made peace with Mary's past, so he's not mad about that anymore. And remember that the two of them are, you know, very traditional British men, so they're not going to show a lot of outward emotion. That's why when they hugged, you know, during the wedding, it was such a huge deal, because, you know, they don't do that a lot. Question number eight, Caroline Guess asks, How do you think they'll bring Moriarty back? So, I actually have a very detailed theory about Moriarty and his appearance in said scene. I'll talk more about that during my Series 4 predictions video though. All I'll say is, is that there is another Skywalker, if you get my meaning. Question number 9, Michael Merck asks, Who's a better villain, Moriarty or Magnuson? So I'll say that I liked Andrew Scott's performance as Moriarty better, but you know, as a, a real world villain, like if these were real world people, Magnuson would be a better villain just because he's a better businessman. Remember, Mycroft said that he is under his protection because he is useful to the British government every once in a while. Question number 10, Blake Hutton asks, do you think that Sherlock being a murderer got out or do you think that the government covered it up? I definitely think that they covered it up. Remember, Mycroft said that England will always need Sherlock Holmes but he is a murderer, so they basically sent him into exile by putting him on this mission for six months, you know, before the events of those last few seconds kind of changed circumstances. Question number 11, Cam Edwards asks, Did you expect Sherlock to do what he did at the end? How else could he have resolved the plot? I was very surprised by, you know, the resolution of that main conflict. The only other way to stop him, remember, the information only existed inside of Magnuson, so they would have had to, you know, permanently incapacitate him, which would have been really hard without killing him. Question number 12, Synop34 asks, Do you think that we'll ever learn what Augustus had on Mary? No, I don't think that we're meant to. That's why they burned that hard drive. Watson says he doesn't care. You know, she's Mary Watson to him. I think Sherlock knows, but in reality, you know, she was just an assassin, so she just killed a bunch of people. Question number 13, Sarah Mia asks, How are Magnuson and Moriarty connected? Is one controlling the other? So, Based on the circumstances and the situations we know from series 1 to 3, just based on that information, I would say that neither is working for the other. They're just like fellow businessmen that trade information. Moriarty probably has snipers on Magnuson at all times, and Magnuson probably has a lot of dirt on Moriarty. 
I'm hoping that something in series four kind of changes that context. Question number 14, Olivia Bembe asks, why do you think that the people in Sherlock's Mind Palace during the middle of the episode were there? So you're talking about Molly, Mycroft, and Moriarty. Three M's, that's funny. The Mind Palace conjures up the most relevant people to help solve a problem, and obviously Sherlock is fighting for his life. So Molly is the best medical professional that he knows, so she's the first person to kind of give him the medical information. Mycroft is the most rational person he knows, so he kind of helps him make the decisions about putting the pieces together about his environment. And then Moriarty basically helps him deal with the pain. Question number 15, Chelsea Parkin asks, Why did Magnuson mention Mary's family in the letter at her wedding? He'd probably just been blackmailing Mary for a long time, so he was just fucking with her, like whenever he was flicking Watson's eye. Question number 16, X Bloody Desires X asks, What did you think about Sherlock becoming a murderer now? I actually think that it's totally in keeping with the character. Remember, he's a high-functioning sociopath, so he's going to solve a problem the best way he knows how. And obviously, in this case, it was, you know, erasing the, you know, hard drive, so to speak, with a bullet. Question number 17, Ombre Trongnez asks, Could you explain the 221B door that flashed during Sherlock's big Mind Palace sequence? 221 Baker Street is just a visual representation of what his life is, and he was basically just trying to claw his way back to life. Question number 18, Ether asks, Does Sherlock use patches to cover up his habit? Janine had a right hand ring, as do the clown gang members. Do the rings mean the same thing? I definitely always imagine Sherlock with patches all over his body all the time, but I think what you're implying is, is that, you know, was he using patches to cover up a heroin habit? I don't think so. I think he was using during this episode, you know, as part of that case, but I don't think he'd, you know, completely fallen off the deep end. And the rings, this is actually really interesting. That's a good question. There are a lot of people in the series, you know, including Mycroft, Anthea, now Janine, that have right hand rings, especially the clown gang members. I'm hoping that something in series four kind of goes to explain that, or something manifests that kind of connects them all, because that would be really, really awesome. Question number 19, Vika Atribune asks, is Sherlock not a virgin anymore? So even though he was in that drug den for that whole month, it's kind of implied that he was going back every night to 221B Baker Street to be with Janine. So I definitely think that they were having sex. The real question is, is was he high when they were doing it? And question 20, last one, Mega Fluffs asks, was Sherlock high at the beginning of the episode? The episode does imply that he was high whenever Molly slapped him, but I don't think that he was, you know, ritualistically using throughout the series. I think it was just during this episode, during that one month period. Thank you so much for submitting your questions, guys. This was a lot of fun. I'm saving a lot of those post-credits questions for my Series 4 Q&A. Don't worry, I'll be doing a predictions video tomorrow, and then the day after that, I'll do a Q&A, you know, just for Series 4 questions. Also remember, Musketeers videos starting this Sunday. I'm really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, click here to get my review of Episode 3, and click here to get my review for Episode 2. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.